So today's big idea uh, is we're going to get started with a uh, something very useful and hands-on that will be part of our main project. We're going to talk about creating a login, logout system. So again, ultimately, the goal of the class is we're going to create the comic book database, an inventory tracking app. So I want to have uh, the ability for someone downloads the app to their device, and there could be multiple accounts. Someone could store their information, log out, someone else logs in, they store their information, and it's separate, of course. I don't want to see my, I don't want my inventory to show up on someone else's account. So we'll have a way to log in and a way to log out. That'll be all through JavaScript, a lot of JavaScript. Uh, interface and visual-wise, that'll be jQuery Mobile. We're going to create these screens, where do you put your password, your email, and all of that. What does it look like when you when it says welcome, whatever, that's going to be jQuery Mobile. But what's going to uh, cause the actual work to happen, the processing and all of that is JavaScript. We're also going to use it extensively jQuery, which is uh, basically shortcuts or shorthand way to write a variety of JavaScript commands. So uh, just kind of planning something a little bit conceptually before we get into right into the coding. Uh, I'm going to make a little drawing here, a schematic or a wireframe of an idea of what the project will be like. I'll put a copy of this drawing in the folder a little bit later. Thank you. And you can do one if you'd like or just check out what I'm doing here. So CVDB wireframe. I'm just going to draw some simple boxes uh, like a little flowchart and such. So this can be accomplished in a, in a variety of ways, of course. One possible way that we can do this is we're going to have some sort of screen where we can have two options. One option is going to take you to another screen, which is the sign up. Another button could take you to a screen that is a log in. We can, of course, have an opening screen where you quickly choose to sign in or another button to sign up. That's something that can be done, of course. I want to separate them for the moment to think about them and think about the flow in the app. Think about the apps that you use. What is the uh, layout or, or the setup uh, of how the flow of the app is? So from the sign up screen, this is going to ask you, you know, a few pieces of key information, your email and password. And usually you confirm the password, right? Mm -hmm. You type in a password, you make sure it's spelled correctly, then you've got an account. This will eventually then take you to some screen. Login screen would be pretty much the same thing. There will be two input fields, your email and your password, and then a button to submit. Either way, through those routes, you eventually end up in some sort of home screen. The actual main part of the app where you do stuff in the app. We have some starting point to take you through some workflow of signing up or logging in. Those are two separate tasks. You're in the app, and then let's say we have some other screen, like an options screen. So you have a bunch of options, and one of them is log out or switch user. So you have a way then to say, okay, I'm finished with my session, or I want to log out, I want to give my friend a chance to use the app, log out. That'll be some system, some button, whatever, that takes you back all the way basically back here, where again, a person can choose to log in or sign up. If I created the account when I downloaded the app, I have an account, then at that point I can just log in again, and I'm using the app again. But if I had the app and then I pass it on to my friend, she has to create an account as well. So she can go through the sign-up process. So you have these various screens. And then later on, we'll, we'll deal with the other stuff here, you know, dot, 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 
what else the app is going to do. The main part of the app, which will be about uh, creating an entry in the database. The idea is we're going to store inventory. The example is a uh, comic book. We're going to see later on, well, I want to store the name of the comic, the year of the comic, the issue number, a photo of it, notes, you know, a bunch of information. All of that data tied to one record of one particular issue. So I want some sort of input method to input some data. That data is going to be saved in a database. Then I want a way to retrieve it. I want to look at everything that's saved, retrieve it, edit it, etc. That's the dot, dot, dot. We'll get back to that later. This is going to take us a couple of weeks or so. We'll see how, fa how fast it goes. But conceptually, you know, the log in, log out, it's going to be a lot of code, you know, uh, only a few hundred lines of code to get that to work. Then we can deal with the other few hundred lines of code to get the main app working and so forth. So the JavaScript is where we're going to spend most of our time because the JavaScript is what does something. So again, that's why HTML and CSS is, is in one book of 500 pages. And that's why JavaScript is by itself in one book of 600 pages because there's a lot more to learn and do and make mistakes of in JavaScript. And we're working in this version of it, which is a web version. This could go on a web server as a website, but eventually it will go into an, an app, like a sort of a shell, or be converted into a real app that will go on a real device, iPhone, Android, Windows, whatever. So this will be CBDB, wireframe, the general idea, the workflow, the details to be filled in. We'll do all of that, of course, but that's the big idea. Does that make sense? Any questions? This is going to be uh, HTML plus CSS plus JS, specifically jQuery Mobile. And then JavaScript slash jQuery. I'll just write JS, JavaScript, um, jQuery. Remember to mute your devices, please. So design interactivity. So that uh, drawing, I'll put it into the network folder a little bit later. And now I've uh, done the obligatory use of our $2,000 touchscreen. <laughs> Save that. Any questions before I put that away? So that big idea there then is going to be what we're going to start to talk about today and in subsequent times, because there's going to be a lot to, to do. So we're going to start the first uh, thing to create this first like sort of welcome interface. We're going to fill in all the details of the graphics and the colors on all of that later. I simply first want to quickly create an interface with input fields and reactions to me typing and all of that. So it will look kind of boring for a while, but the homework for this class, you know, we're not going to have that much homework because I think you can, uh, you can show me how well you've learned these things pretty easily based on everything that we do week by week and then you show me like what you've done. So the homework will be, it'll be like one big homework on part one, part two, part three of the class, not a whole bunch of like weekly homeworks, whatever. So at the last day of this month, uh, it's going to be a culmination of what we're learning in this class for you to show me if you've been able to do what we're trying to do. So visually and all of that, we're going to rely on jQuery Mobile. Uh, the way I'd like for you to set up is you should have your flash drive or however you're saving your work. On your flash drive, let's um, create a project folder. So on my flash drive, I've got a folder for this class. I'm going to make a folder in there called CBDB. 
And I recommend you uh, put the date. Because what I like to do is, as we work on this project and change it, at the beginning of the day, I like to start off with a copy of last time's work. So today's Thursday. If we had been working on this on Tuesday, the date would have been 9-12. And today I would have made a copy of the whole folder and named the folder 9-14. I'm going to put that folder in the network folder at the end of the day if you'd like to check the code. Next week when we come back on the 19th, I'm going to make a copy of 914 and title it 919. So every time I'm here, I'm going to make a copy so that I always have a version from the last time I worked. The purpose of that is in case I make mistakes, I can go back to a version before I made today's mistakes. So. You can do this however you want, of course. You can make a folder on your flash drive simply called CVDB and keep working with the same files over and over. But if you run into any problems and you don't have backups of your work, you're in trouble. You'll be able to get a copy of my work, of course, whatever your workflow is. So I've got a folder with today's date, CVDB project. I'm just going to make it super simple. Don't need the year. 9.14 whatever you want to call it. And then in Notepad, once again, we'll start with a blank file. But I want to set ourselves up this time. I want to download all of those libraries. Last time what we did was we connected to the jQuery and the jQuery mobile uh, JavaScript libraries, and we needed to rely on an internet connection to for it to work. After we set up our basics here, I'll show you. Let, we'll, we'll go download our uh, libraries to have a copy of them on our in our project folder. So the, the usual 10 lines of code. Save that on your flash drive. Uh, call the file index.html usually the first file in a project, and a, a, an HTML-based project, is called index.html. That will be more important when we actually upgrade it to an app. This will be the default file name it assumes, which can be changed, but it's just easier to use the default uh, file structure. So go ahead and set that up starting point, 10 lines of code. If you have your file from last time, that'd be a shortcut, perhaps. So you have to figure out your workflow and what will be faster and more efficient for you. We're going to need that um, viewport meta tag again. I didn't put anything to title, that's fine. We'll, I'll do that. We'll do that later. We need the meta tag which was name equals something and content equals something. Import initial scale one, user scalable no, with is device width. So we saw this already before. This is just uh, practicing this again. We're not going to start over every single time. This is most likely the last time we're going to start with a blank document because now this one for real we will use throughout the rest of the three months. The first uh, three lessons that we had, the first three lectures, we started over, we learned some concepts, we focused on what we needed to learn at that point. Here now, this will be something we will use throughout the whole semester, the three months. In a moment, we'll go to jQueryMobile.com and we will download the actual files. Previously, we linked to those files when they were on the server. 
and I want to download them and make them part of my folder, the, the project in my folder. Then we'll go over to jQuery.com and download the jQuery library. So we're going to download three files in a moment instead of relying on the internet connection. Title, I guess we can put CBDB. And now I'm going to go open the web browser. So open up your favorite web browser. Let's go to jQueryMobile.com. jQueryMobile.com. So did anyone uh, spend some time on jQueryMobile.com since the last time we, we met up? A couple people, not enough. So uh, remember you want to check out here because we didn't cover everything about jQueryMobile last time and we'll cover more things we haven't. But if you want to learn how to make you know, uh, a fully mobile friendly form or other widgets, it's all here. Pop-ups and all of that. So jQueryMobile.com. On the right side, you see we've got, okay, version 1.4.5 is available, and it's compatible with jQuery 1.8 to, to 1.11 or 2.1. So make a note of that. We're about to download 1.4.5 from, from this site, and then in a moment we'll download jQuery. This is two separate libraries. jQuery is often a foundational library for many other projects. So we're going to need the jQuery files in a moment, as well as the jQuery mobile files. From here, you can click on Latest Stable. It will give you a zip file. Save that zip file. I'm in Firefox, what so popped up like this to ask me. If you're in Chrome, it may automatically download it. It will give you a zip file. You don't need to unzip the whole thing. Mine downloaded. It ended up on the desktop. I have a zip file. In the zip file is a lot of stuff. You really only need three things. In the zip file, we have at the very end, in the zip file, jQuery mobile 145.min.css, blah blah blah.min.js, and jQuery mobile blah blah.map. These three files are the only ones you need out of the zip file. Everything else you don't need. And you will see that there's a jQuery CSS and a jQuery JS. Those will work fine, but the ones I'm asking you to do are these last three ones. The minified versions and the map to the minified version. Those three, put them into your project folder. I'm going to refer over and over to your project folder etc., which is whatever you called your folder on your flash drive, that's your project folder. From the zip file, grab those three files, the very last three ones, and put it into CDDB. And you will also need that images folder. All of those icons that are built into jQuery Mobile are in that folder. Right, the little home icon, the navigation icon, all of the icons built into jQuery Mobile. So if you're having any trouble, let me know. You need those three files plus the images folder. Copy those into your projects folder. last time we had a connection to those files on the server. Now I'm going to put them into the project folder so that I don't have to rely on an internet connection. The app would also be more responsive faster because it's all bundled instead of having to connect to an online resource. 
index.html will be our file that includes all of the screens. Welcome screen, login, logout, home screen, database screen, whatever. The whole project is going to be in the index.html, the visual aspects. And we've got those three libraries. <laughs> yes? So, by all the way, you want to main index, is that correct? Yes, the starting point of the CVDB project should be called index.html. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's one thing. The second thing is that on the jQuery mobile site, it says you also need a copy of jQuery, either 1.8 to 1.11 or 2.1. So jQuery mobile is part of the family of jQuery, and you can get to it quickly by going to the first tab right there, or just type jQuery.com. The jQuery homepage here will let you download the latest version of jQuery, which is 3.2, which is not what we want. We want to use a different version of jQuery. So we have to dig in a little bit here. It's not as easy as jQuery mobile, but we select it to download the latest file. We need to download version 2.1. That's what it says right here. You need 1.11 or 2.1. So at the jQuery website, we need to go over to, I guess, uh, download jQuery. Yeah, click on download jQuery, and then in here, we're going to see at the very bottom, past releases. So after you click the big brown download button, <coughs> scroll all the way down to go to a past release. Click on that link, jQuery CDN at a past release. Uh, this is saying jQuery 2.2. .2. Again, that's not the one we want. So here you'll see, showing the latest, see all versions. Should be a button right there. See all versions of jQuery core. Then when we scroll down, so the thing that we're doing here is there are three versions of jQuery. The 1.x branch, the 2.x branch, and the 3.x. The point of this is that in the original 1.x branch, which came out probably 10 years ago, it had compatibility with a variety of web browsers, including the old creaky and clunky web browsers that couldn't handle the latest cool web stuff. So the jQuery team then broke off a, a branch 2x, which did not have compatibility with the old web browsers. So we had to decide, do I want to cover the old web browsers like Internet Explorer 7, Firefox 6, Google Chrome 3? Well, then I'd have to use jQuery 1x. But those browsers haven't existed in a long time. And those browsers don't exist on mobile devices. So there's no Internet Explorer 7 or 8 or 9 or 10 on a, uh, on a Windows phone. There's Edge. There's no Firefox 3.0, 4.0, 5.0, 10.0 on a phone. There's Firefox like 40. There's no Google Chrome version 2, 3, 5, 10 on a phone. There's you know Google Chrome 45, whatever. So we don't have to worry about old compatibility because our project is going to be a web project, or an app, not a web project. So I don't care about uh, being compatible with old web browsers. Eventually they merged 1 and 2 back together into 3. It's still a little too new, so we're not going to use it. But jQuery Mobile was saying that you need 1.1.1, or sorry, 2.1.1. This is the one we need here. Which of these two do you think we need? Minified. Minified, yes. The minified compressed faster version. If you click it, I think it might just show you all the code, or something might happen. You want to right-click and uh, save that file, and save that file into your project folder. Whatever, however your web browser works, you want to save that file and save it into your project folder.
Should we just accept the name that our record pops up? I would say keep that name. And that name has the version number, which is useful to know if you need to upgrade your code later on. So ultimately you have, or you should have, this uh, structure in the project. The index file, which will be our starting point for our app. A CSS file of jQuery Mobile. A JavaScript file of jQuery Mobile. A JavaScript file of jQuery a map file for the JavaScript file of jQuery Mobile, and the images folder from the zip file, which includes all of the icons built in. Don't just create an images folder. That's not what I asked. In your zip file, you have an images folder that you need a copy of. And that's our project. Yes? So you said to right-click on... Mine ended up doing a whole... You want to say the You want to make sure you right click the, the link. Mm -hmm. 2.1.1, right click the minified link. Oh, okay. So we've got those two files in our project. We then need to link to them in the index.html file. We need to write the code that connects the index file to those to those three files, to those three libraries. Back in Notepad, we'll start off with the CSS file. Line 7 or so, we have a link, rel attribute, href attribute. Rel is stylesheet. We're about to link to a stylesheet file. Style sheet file is the one right in your folder, which is simply the name of the file. We didn't have to type that huge address to connect to it on the server. It's right in our own folder. So we simply reference the name of the file. I copied and pasted the, the name of the file from the Explorer window instead of typing it and mistyping it. If you do copy it, don't forget to type the extension .css. Then we need to add the links to the jQuery jQuery uh, libraries. So in body, before the end of body, we'll add a script. That one's got a pair. Link does not have a pair. But it has a an SRC, a source. And that one is simply also the name of the file min.js I said a moment ago that jQuery is often the foundation for other libraries which means it should be in in that order in your code actually we should connect or load the jQuery library first and then the jQuery mobile library so one line above that We'll set ourselves up to link to the jQuery library. It is very important to put it in this order. If you put it in the other order, it will probably cause problems because all of this is processed by the web browser or the device from top to bottom. We want to first load up all of the jQuery code into memory. Then we want to open up the jQuery mobile code after that. So this order does matter. Yes? Pull it, pull it up where? This is the whole code so far. Zoom in. Zoom in. 
So we want to have those two libraries first. Later on, we're going to have other libraries as well. We're going to deal with databases later on. Um, so we're going to open up another JavaScript library or connect to another JavaScript library later. We're also going to do things when we get this into Cordova, also known as PhoneGap, which is a way for our web project to access the capabilities of a device. Later on, we'll learn how to write some JavaScript to take a photo, to access the GPS of the device. Well, JavaScript is not the language that interfaces with an iPhone to activate the camera. It's either Objective-C or Swift. But with the Cordova library that we'll see later, it will basically translate our JavaScript code into the right language of any device. I don't need to know the specific code for the Android and the different code for iPhone and the different code for Windows. I write the JavaScript code and the Cordova library will translate it, basically. That will be in part two of the class. One more thing we'll add here. We're going to write a lot of custom code ourselves. So, we need another script tag here. We're going to write a lot of JavaScript. When we started our first JavaScript project, we wrote our, all of our code in between the two tags. And that worked fine at that point because it was a simple project. Here we want to do what was done here in that we'll put all of our JavaScript code in its own file. That way we can reuse that JavaScript file in this index.html file, in an about.html file, in a contact.html file, because any code that's inside of this script is really only going to apply in this file. And I may, I may have more than one file to work with, so a more efficient way is external CSS libraries and eventually um, Call this my I'll call it my JavaScript.js. Eventually we're going to write a bunch of our own JavaScript in here. There is no such file at the moment. We'll create that soon. We're going to create a file a little later called myJavascript.js. Right now this connection doesn't work. On the same vein, I want to do the same thing for CSS. We were using the jQuery library, CSS. I want to have my own sort of my CSS file, because then I'll want to add a custom font, colors, styling, alignment, all of that stuff, and it'll be in my css.css file. That file doesn't exist in the folder as well. We'll create both of those pretty easily in just a moment. So Notepad++ or any text editor will let you create and edit just about any kind of code or markup files. So I want to create a uh, CSS file and a JavaScript file. Let's save our current file, and then let's go up to File Menu, New, File Save As. In this project folder, we'll start off with my CSS dot CSS, and the save as type will be cascading style sheets. So in the index file, I had a link to a file called my CSS dot CSS. 
I think that's what I call it. I forgot already. And I'm saving it as .css. I'm saving it in the same root level of the project, the same level that the index file is at. If you don't see index file in the window, that's perfectly normal, because what I'm saying here is I'm going to save a CSS file. So it's only showing CSS files in the window. If you don't see your index, that's, that's normal. Save that. And just quick, quick comment here. My custom CSS. So this file is just going to be full of CSS code that we will write later. Because we saw that jQuery Mobile has just a plain old simple basic gray design. We have theme B, which is a cool uh, dark looking theme. But what if I wanted red colors and yellow colors and purples and different images? Well that's going to be a lot of custom CSS. Because the purpose of CSS is design, colors and fonts and all of that. So the purpose of this CSS file then is for all my custom CSS. And so on my line 8, I've got a link there to my CSS file. We need to do the exact same thing for the my JavaScript file. Which I already think that's a long name, so I'm going to rename it myjs.js. Call these things whatever you want. myjs.js files uh, file new File save as myjs.js, save as type JavaScript. Brand new file, and I'm saving it as myjs.js, save as type JavaScript. Notice again here, it only shows you the JavaScript files because I'm choosing to only see JavaScript files. If it doesn't show your index or that CSS file we created a moment ago, that's normal because the filter here is only showing JavaScript types. So now my index.html file has the connection to the myCSS and the myJS files. My project folder looks like this so far. Images folder, those CSS files, and those two custom ones I just created. My CSS, my JS files. Oh, in the, in the JS file you can also write here that same comment. My custom JavaScript code. Just as a little placeholder reminder. Let's pause here. Let's make sure everyone's got those files and that code. There's my code again. Anyone need a little help with that? We need to have this structure set up, of course, before we go on, or we'll uh, all we'll be out of sync. So once you've got that, we'll go on. Okay, so I want to start building these different screens. In that picture that I drew, I, in that wireframe, I, I showed these are the different screens I want to work with. So there's going to be a sort of a welcome screen. That welcome screen lets you choose to log in or sign up. There's going to be a sign up screen. There's going to be a login screen. There's, then there's eventually, once you get past that, a home screen. All of those screens are going to be jQuery Mobile. We're going to save ourselves some effort here by copying the template code from the work on uh, Tuesday. 
if you don't have that file, from the network folder. You can get a copy of it, the 912 file, if you open it, or you uh, right-click, edit with Notepad. We just need to copy from that file the 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 template code that's that's enough for us to use in our project so either use your own code or from the network folder those 12 lines or so is all that we need from the 912 file remember everything in the network folder is locked so if you try to make any changes here it won't let you, it'll give you an error. But all I want to copy is section to section at about line 75 to 91. That's a skeleton of a screen full in jQuery Mobile instead of having to retype it. Yes? Can I see the zoom of that? Well, just copy it from the folder. What? Yeah, what I just want to make sure I'm copying. My lines are different. Well, logically, you're going to copy from where your section starts to where your section ends. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. Uh, I'm going to close that 912 file, and I'm going to add that to my index.html. I'm going to make a note here that this is my template. Start jQuery mobile template. and jQuery mobile template. So all of that code, it has the data roll page. It has an ID that I want to set properly. It has the header with its data role and data position. It has the H1 placeholder. It has a simple nav bar. It has the main article and the footer. So it's a complete jQuery mobile skeleton, which we will reuse uh, with a simple copy and paste for the different screens that we need. Then we customize it. I'm going to separate that off over there. I'm going to copy. I'm going to copy all of that. And paste it right at the beginning of body. Because this will now be our start welcome screen. So I copied that template file, or that, temp that template code, and I pasted it. So you should have two copies of it, the original template, which we will leave alone, and this new copy. This new copy, we need to change a bunch of things. ID is one of the most important. Each section needs a unique ID for us to navigate successfully. We'll call this PG Welcome. This is our welcome screen. It's a page. So I'm calling it PG Welcome. When I reference it elsewhere in my code, PG should help remind me this is a page. I could spell it out, page welcome. You call these whatever you want. You just have to be consistent to what you call them. The H1 will be the name of the app, CBDB. And actually, I don't need any sort of fancy navigation bar at the moment. The purpose of the welcome screen is maybe to show you a picture, you know, some sort of icon of the app, and then the options, log in or sign up. So I don't need a nav bar. Remove that nav bar completely from the header. 
I also don't want a footer. In this case, I want it very straightforward. The name of the app, here's your actions, log in or sign up. So I don't need that footer. So this welcome screen is going to be very simple. Name of the app, some content. I don't need that H2 either. Actually, don't delete it, but we're going to change it because it's not going to be main anymore. It's going to be either if you're a new user or a returning user. So main returning user. And then another one, new user. And in the beginning, we're going to have different screens the process of returning and the process of new. There will be different screens, but once we understand what's happening, we can then you can then combine them if you choose. What I want for the returning user is to have a button here that will uh, take us to a separate screen. So uh, a tag, a returning user is going to need a login. A new user going to need a sign up. The person can choose. I want to log in. That'll be a button. Or I'm brand new. I need to sign up. This is an href to a page that doesn't exist yet. PG login. <coughs> Sign up. Where should that go? Before you answer that, pound. So, sorry about that. Pound PG login. Very easy to forget that pound sign. Very important to have it because this is going to be pointing to an ID of a page login when you click the login button. So we're going to create a page later. PG login. PG login. So what's a good idea to, to type here for the sign up? Pound PG sign up, yep. PG sign up. Pound PG sign up. Both of these are plain old links. They don't look like real buttons. So this is where we're gonna then upgrade these plain old links into real looking buttons. jQuery mobile. How do we do that? Data roll, data roll button. So a data roll button will upgrade it from a plain old link. I want that also for sign up. This is again where copy and paste will really help. So at the moment, those two pages don't exist yet. We'll work on that soon. But we've got a couple of buttons that look like buttons. I also want to add animation. What do we uh, type for animations? Data transition. Through most of the app, I would like to navigate from screen to screen with a certain animation. This contains, or this keeps us consistent. This keeps the user thinking we're using the app a certain way. This is part of user experience. For other actions, I want to use a different transition. So we can use any, you can choose any you like, but I'm going to go with flip 
as the main animation from going from screen to screen. Every time we do a flip, subconsciously, it keeps the user thinking that we're using the app the, the right way, the, the normal way. If we choose a different transition, that then alerts people. Something is different. Look at how it moved. Something happened differently. So I want to have a different transition for the sign-up. This is a different conceptual action. So a slide-up animation. This will slide into view. It will look different, even if they don't pay attention. Whatever the psychology is that a person takes, you know, 1.25 seconds or whatever to realize something, this, these changes of animations are part of that to help the person re have them realize you're doing something differently. Um, do you ever notice this, that you're doing something online and things pop up and you just kind of quickly click OK or whatever? How many times have you made a mistake and clicked OK on something you shouldn't have? Well, that's because they didn't do good user experience. They didn't make it obvious that this is a different kind of thing you should look at and not just quickly press OK. So even something simple like this, the kind of animation helps guide people. Let's say we'll also add a couple of icons. Data dash icon. Let's do arrow dash R. And I want to do data dash icon POS, icon position right. I want to put that right arrow on the right side of the icon. It's going to be an arrow to guide them, and the arrow itself will be on the right side of the button. And when they click, we'll have a flip animation. Um, for the sign up, I want to have a data icon called user. This is a little icon of a generic person. Again, the, this stuff is also part of user experience. There are 50 icons built in, which are these sort of like standard communi communicatory symbols. The, the one that looks like a calendar often has the meaning of something about dates. The one of a video camera often has a meaning about let's record video. The one of a person has, an, has a meaning of let's do something with an icon, with your account or something. So these icons have built in meanings even uh, like the arrow. Here I'm using it to the right arrow. Now I'm assuming uh, you know Western languages reading left to right, so the, the arrow pointing to the right is you know proceed. In other languages where we have right to left uh, reading, well the arrow is pointing the wrong way. But there's the aspects of localization and globalization that we can talk about for your app later to make it multilingual and all of that. And I, I want to keep the icon on the left side, so I don't have to specify icon position. It'll automatically stay on the left side. We've done a lot of typing and all of that, but we haven't really checked if it works yet. So go ahead and run it in your browser. It should look something like this. If it looks very different, it's a perfect time for a break. So if it looks something like this, good. If not, let's take a break, and you can call me over some, for some help, but this is what it should look like so far. The welcome screen, in a moment we'll create the login screen and the sign-up screen, but this is what we have so far. Later on we'll put colors and graphics and all that fun stuff, but this is what we have so far. <laughs>